Thanks, Amy. Well, how can you stop violence before it starts? Cornell Jones is the Group Violence Intervention Coordinator for the City of Pittsburgh, and in the last two years, we have seen here in our city a drop in violent crime because of their unique approach. Cornell, welcome to Real Life. I'm glad to be here. I appreciate the invite. Well, uh, this is this is a, a, a subject that every day we see headlines, yeah. national headlines. Mm -hmm. We see it. We see it in our own city here. We see violence. You know, some some of us live in neighborhoods where we we've seen that violence even in our own neighborhoods, and it doesn't all. It's not always just in one area. It's starting mm -hmm. to spread out to various places. Um, but what can we do? Uh, and what, what does your organization do to try, to try to circumvent that, try to work against that? Well, so my, my role uh, as the Group Violence Intervention Coordinator is to the, bring together all, all, three, um, all three angles of this. We're looking at uh, the community outreach part of it, we're looking at um, social services and looking at law enforcement mm -hmm. and bringing those together to be able to counteract violence. Uh, from doing violence prevention for a lot of years, you know, you, we found that you can't, do, uh, you can't just have outreach without utilizing uh, law enforcement. And you can't have outreach and law enforcement without having social services. But what people don't understand is you can't have anything without bringing in the faith-based part. Right, right. Well, it, it's, it, it's funny because we, we tend to think, well, if somebody does wrong, we just arrest them. But you just yeah. can't arrest everybody. And, 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 and recidivism is really bad where people will come back, do the same thing as soon as they get out. And so... When you bring that faith-based part, you mentioned community outreach. Mm -hmm. Well, who does more outreach than the church, sure. you know? And so how does the church get involved in that? So just to give you an example, I, I think it's important to give you an example um, of how we've seen the church getting involved in, in this right here. Uh, so, you know, downtown Pittsburgh, was, there's usually a big event that's going on. July 4th, there's thousands of kids that are down there. Um, with that, sometimes comes some chaos. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is I'll, I'll bring together what I call the village. The village is uh, community leaders, community outreach people, law enforcement still, and I'll bring pastors and coaches. So what we've seen is when we've gone um, through the community downtown and don't working to do some intervention, uh, we'll see some of the kids who are about to fight. And what was amazing was we'll see a uh, pastor will see one of their people from their congregation and they will walk up to the situation and, and de-escalate it mm -hmm. to the point where that saves someone from 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 getting arrested or, or going to prison. So we're finding that we're finding ways to put people just like in the church. We're finding ways to put people in their roles so they could walk in their purpose. Well, and, and you served for uh, years as a as a chaplain mm -hmm. in uh, in the prison here, and. Um, You've seen firsthand where God has gotten hold and changed people's lives. You, you even had a unique approach to what to do with those prisoners that had gotten saved and, and how to develop new programs, right? True. Yeah. So, I mean, just one of the things that I've learned is, you, you know, God will use anybody. And, yeah. and, and a lot of the stuff that I've learned, even to the point where some of the people who volunteer for me are people who've been locked up. Who, those, those are some of the ones who've made some of the, the, the most amazing results from working with me. Um, but I've learned to, to let us, you know, we, we, I remember one time I was sharing with you that we, uh, we had a, a strategy where we had a press conference. It, it was a fake, it was a mock co press conference. And I asked the guys to, to, to develop um, an organization that will counteract what you're in prison for. Wow. And it made them do a lot of soul searching. It made them really just look at some of the things It made them look at the traumas that, of their lives. And some of them were talking about things from drug and alcohol issues and what they could have did and how God can use them um, to be able to counteract some of these things. And some, it's, it's, what's exciting is there's actually an organization that's doing this on the outside now because that vision was written in prison, in prison and they moved forward on it. We, I mean, that's awesome. It's, it's awesome that a, a person, I mean, who knows better why they ended up there? Yeah, for sure. You know, if, if they get beyond, if they get to the real heart of the matter, I mm -hmm. guess, you mm -hmm. know, the real heart of the matter of what was going on in my life mm -hmm. that brought me to this place. True. And, and, and from out of that, able to develop something that helps other people. That's true. And you know what's amazing is from working in this field, you know, it, it's, uh, you know I, I usually say this on other shows, but it's real for us as believers. People just want to be loved. People yeah. just want to be loved. They, wanna, um, they want somebody to show that they care. Um, you, know, uh, I, I, you know, I'm just a vessel used by God. People are like, how are you doing some of these amazing things, being able to talk to people who you know are shooters? And, you know, I, they're people. 
there are people that, that, that made a uh, bad mistake. And, and my thing is, if I could help transition their life to be able to walk in their purpose, no matter what situation that they're in, we could really start changing some lives. And I've been excited. Um, my biggest challenge is making sure that we get the churches involved mm -hmm. uh, as, as much as, as possible because, I, I, you know, a lot of this stuff is, is spiritual. You know, I've seen some of the most... <laughs> evil situations where, where I've contacted, you know, people that I know and, and asked them to pray. And when they got on there, you know, it's, I like to use that example, the, the, the fuel and the fire was there and it was guaranteed where, where something was going to happen, that, where I knew something was going to happen. And I contacted some of the people to pray. They contacted the intercessors and people like that mm -hmm. and people prayed and, and nothing happened. So, you know, utilizing that, utilizing what I call prayer walks, where people are walking and praying in the community, utilizing, utilizing the evangelism groups and just finding out, you know, I realized from pastoring, I realized that every single person that's a pastor has someone in that congregation that says, pastor, we're not in them streets. And those are the people who a lot of times I'm like, hey, let's connect those people with some of the things that we're doing and we could really make some transformation in the community. Well, I mean, we're the ones with the, the uh, as Christians, we have the words of life, we right? Do. We, we have do. the words that will transform uh, our, 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 society by transforming individuals, but a lot of times we're, we're insulated. Right. We're, 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 we're happy, we sit in the pew, we sing the songs, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. How, do, how do we get connected? So first thing I would say is um, I'm, I would love for people to contact me mm -hmm. to get involved. You know, I, I would gladly come out to their congregation and, and help out and just do a training if people want to get involved with some of the things, some of the methods. Uh, the other thing that I, I'm a big believer on is um, because I come from working in incarceration, is adopting someone who's coming out of incarceration. You know, a lot of times people will say, they'll contact me, they'll, they'll write me, and they'll say, Pastor, I wanna do well, I have no support. So what happens is if you don't have any support, you go back to what you know. So it, a lot of times they'll go back to the streets and, and if we can have someone who's pouring into them, who's loving them, right. someone who's contacting them and helping them to get employment and things that they need, not, not babying them, but, but in, you, know, you know, teaching them how to, to be able to, uh, what do say, uh, you know, instead of giving them a fish, I'm going to teach you how to fish on your own, mm -hmm. but I'm supporting you while you're fishing on your own, too. So you're not being left by yourself. So if we could have people that are learning how to do that type of stuff, we'll really see some changes. And what, what uh, we've been able to see through your organization is that when all these things are together, amazing. when you've got the, the, the community outreach, mm -hmm. including the churches, when you've got the law enforcement, <clears throat> when you've got uh, all of these different aspects all working together, You've been able to see crime come down incredibly. Incredibly, incredibly. You know what, something that, that's important to know too is when, whenever there's a, a homicide or a, a non-fatal shooting, you know, I'm one of the people who will get with my outreach team and law enforcement and we'll strategize and do what's called a custom notification. A custom notification is we go, we figure out, and this is that, and this is that discernment a lot of times, we try and figure out <clears throat> who's gonna be the next possible shooter. So we, you know, we're finding out who might be that next person, a good friend or someone who's very passionate, and go to that person, and with a, usually with a mother who lost a loved one, uh, um, someone who's from clergy, with law enforcement there too, and we say we love you, we care about you, and we want to help you. We don't want you to get caught up. We don't want your mom, you know, the mother usually says that lost a loved one says, we don't want you to go through what I'm going through on a regular mm -hmm. basis. On the holidays, I don't see my baby anymore. And we're trying to wrap our arms around them <clears throat> in love. No one's trying to do anything to, to, do, to harm them. We're trying to love on them mm -hmm. and give them the, res the resources that they need so they could live because we don't want to bury any more babies. Right, and retaliation is a big problem. Oh, uh, uh, and, and you've been able to see where actually intervene so that retaliations don't happen. For sure. You know, whenever there's a, a, a shooting or a homicide, you know, or most of a non-fatal shooting where someone goes to the hospital, I get a call and I go to the hospital too. You know what I mean? I go to that person and find out what they need, what resources are there too, but also find out what the family needs and give them the support that they need to be able to deal with the situation too, connect them with other resources that are there. But, you know, I also make sure I'm connecting with some of the people that are there who are uh, caught up who might be caught up and might retaliate so I could make sure I let them think about, sec you know, the choices that they're making. So right. it's been amazing. 
Right, absolutely. Well, we're going to talk to you a little bit more uh, in just a, a few moments here, but thank you so much for sharing with us. Thank it's, you. It's, it's, it's awesome. And uh, we'll, we'll also have information a little bit later about how you can contact uh, Cornell and how you can get involved. When we get involved, when the gospel gets involved, when the life of Christ that's in us gets involved in people's lives, things begin to change. All we got to do is take that step. Well, we're back with Cornell Jones talking about community involvement and the difference it can make. Cornell, I want to ask you, can our neighborhoods thrive? I mean, I think that's what we're believing for, right? Mm -hmm. To see neighborhoods, because you look at some neighborhoods and they're not thriving. Yeah. And, and, and we talk about the spiritual side of things, but when the spiritual thing starts happening in people's lives, a lot of other things happen too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, it sort of makes me think of the candies dry bones live. You know what I mean? Like, I believe that these dry bones can live. Yeah. And I've seen some of the most deepest and darkest situations come to life where, where you see just how the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord just came upon and just trans, transformed situations. Mm -hmm. So I'm a believer of it, but it, it, it takes obedience. Mm -hmm. It takes sacrifice. It takes everybody being in their lane. When I say being in their lane, you know, you know, uh, not everyone's a street person. Not, not everyone knows how to deal with the street level. I was in a meeting and some, a lady said to me, she's like, you know, Pastor Jones, she said, I don't, I can't be out on them streets, but I have an organization that, that has free, that, that does, does tattoo removal. And I was like, you don't understand. Like someone might have hate or some type of wow. gang tattoo. She said, I'll take it off for free. I said, you, you're changing lives wow. by wow. using wow. that as an example right there. So if all of us find our lane and, and work together as the body, you'll see some real transformation. It's, it's, it, I think a lot of people think that it's just a law enforcement thing or it's just not all of us. Even in the church, if you look at yeah. the churches, you have people who are teachers. You have, mm -hmm. you have d people of different p occupations. And if we put those talents Mm -hmm. to, to be able to be used in, in a way where we're, we're working together and saying, hey, this, this person right here needs this. Let's be able to love on them to the point where they're getting in these resources. You'll see some change. That, that word love keeps people from hurting themselves. It gives people purpose. It gives people just a reason for existence. Yeah. And, I, you know, just by loving on someone and saying, hey, we care about you. Uh, you're a masterpiece, as yeah. you talked about mm -hmm. earlier. And you're, you're, for, you're made in God's image. Yeah. So because of that, that means that you have a purpose and I'm willing to walk with you through that purpose. What would you say to a Christian that they live in a rough neighborhood and they know stuff is going on and they see it on the streets, but they choose to just go about their own life life and kind of ignore what's going on instead of engaging and impacting? Hmm. So I would say connect with um, someone who is, I mean, because someone who, well, number one, make sure the foundation of who you are is the word of God. Yeah. And don't, don't sway from, from that right there. But make sure that, that you know, a, a speck of light <laughs> Yeah. Will we'll, we'll oversee, will just shine even in darkness right there. Mm -hmm. if, you, if that person right there continues to be an example, as, as my grandmother, you say, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Yeah. Through whatever situation, they can set an example and a standard. I didn't realize how many people, even when I would go and visit the hole in, in, in the penitentiary, I didn't realize how many people were looking at my walk and looking at how I was, I was like, hold up, there's people even getting their beard the exact same way. You know, they're, they're looking at us. And Aww. sometimes wow. we're the only example of the Bible that they're getting a chance to see. Yeah. So be an example and don't let the environment change you. You change the environment, environment. through the That's anointing good. of God. That's right. Through the wow. presence of the Holy Spirit. So there's, there's hope for restoration, redemption. I believe. God can redeem back what like, like beautiful neighborhoods that were built 40 and 50 years ago that used to be a thriving area where people would come to yeah. and then somehow over the years they, they start the buildings run down and, and the, the places get right. more inexpensive Expensive and, mm -hmm. and, you know, some, some evil tries to come in there. So there's hope. There's hope. There's hope. I, I know I mentioned it earlier, but a lot of the mentoring that I had, even from working in the prisons and, and came from people who, <laughs> who uh, were incarcerated for, and, like, they have life sentences wow. that were caught up in a lot of serious things. They poured into me because they said, you're an example and we want that example to go forward out into the, the community. So I'm loving the example that I'm able to be able to, be, to share, to let people see another experience. I think, do you think most people are afraid to talk about prisoners and prison reform and like that they can actually transform to be the, the most helpful, amazing people in a community. Well, I think that you hit on it. It's people in their communities are afraid. Mm -hmm. You know, they're afraid to do something that, that, that they think 
I put myself in danger. Mm -hmm. But I, I had a question. How's law enforcement receive you? You this? know what? And, it's, and, and God is good. Because even with law enforcement that? receiving me, you, it, law enforcement is a whole other world. Yeah. You know, the community is a whole other world. God, you know, but by me working in law enforcement in the prison system, yeah. I'm able to deal with both the law enforcement side and deal with the community side and bring them work both together. together. So it, this, is, this was totally orchestrated by God. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, I've actually even um, uh, married some of the officers and, you know what I mean? Aww. So, did, you know, presided over their wedding. So things like that. So just making sure that the, the more we work together as a village, you, you'll hear me yes. talk about that village a lot. The more we work together as a village and everybody finds their role and we love on the people in the village and, and pray for the people in the village and, and do what we're called to do, the more you'll see some changes. That People are striving. People are hungry. They don't want a lot of the things that we're seeing, the, the using the drugs and alcohol, that's, that's numbing. Yes. That's because there's a void. They don't have the they don't have the spirit of the Lord, and they don't have God's presence isn't there. Yeah. So you feel that to be able to numb situations, but when you get that spirit of the Lord that 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 transforms lives, and it's almost like taking somebody who who you the the X factor, as I like to say, the X drug use. Sometimes we got to go back to the old testimony yes, services right. where we're sharing. I used to do this, and yes. this is what God brought me through. Yes. And not just that, Absolutely. but say um, now because God brought me through that, I'm willing to walk with you, brother or sister, yeah. and to be able to take let God show you how to take your life to a whole nother, another level, another standard. Right. Well, that, that's awesome that that there are people that you've helped or people that have been helped by this program. They're probably your some of your biggest helps now, sure. and and because their lives have been changed. Their lives have been changed. They yeah. want to see it. Well, if you would like to call contact uh, John, I'm sorry, Cornell, uh, you can call the prayer partners and uh, we will get your information to him if you'd like to get your uh, church involved with him. Or you can go to our website, ctvn.org, and we'll link to his information there as well. Yeah. It's, well, I love it. Well, you keep saying like to love on the village, which yeah. is really in essence saying to love on our neighborhood, love love on our community. What are some action steps behind that? What does that look like? What does loving on somebody look like? <laughs> Believe it or not, basic is a smile, yeah. good morning, God bless you. You know, shaking, say, hey, God, you're shaking someone. When, I, <laughs> when, when, when people used to walk into, and I do it on the streets too, when they used to walk into the congregation, yep. I, I'd shake their hand. But while I'm shaking their hand, I'm, I'm praying for them at the same time. Yeah. God bless you. How are you today? Hey, good brother. Hey, good sister. Just, just speaking life instead of speaking. You know, life and death comes in the power of the That's tongue. Fine. So we want to be able to speak some, you know, life to people. Be showing up. Hey, how was your day today? And, and actually meaning it. You know yes. what I mean? If, if it's a bad day, guess what? I'm going to give you air for a little bit of time. Investing in the people. Investing in God's people. People yeah. so that they could know that they're loved. I'm telling you, when somebody knows that they're loved, they, it gives them purpose, and I've seen the changes that it's made. What about even saying, you know, God has a great purpose for your life, or you're the sharpest person I've seen all day. You yeah, know, they're just... The masterpiece, they're masterpieces. They masterpiece. need to know that. I've never seen the coolest hair I've ever seen. That's cool. You know, just like different creative ways to compliment people and to try to connect with them. I think it really puts them in that place of, hey, somebody believes cares. in me, somebody cares.